Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. This joke goes viral from time to time, and I've had many requests to cover it. A handwritten note with a bank card is left on the table. Hi, darling. Use my ATM card. Take any amount out. Go shopping and take your friends for lunch. The pin code. The integral from 0 to 1 of the fraction 3x cubed minus x squared plus 2x minus 4 all over the square root of x squared minus 3x plus 2. This is multiplied by dx. I love you, honey. So we have a little bit of a joke. You're supposed to use a pin card, but you need to evaluate this ridiculous integral. So leaving the joke aside, how do you calculate this integral? So this is not something that's ever taught in a normal classroom. This is something very difficult. So I did some research and I found the technique is to use Euler substitution. I would not have come up with this by myself. I saw it on Math Stack Exchange. Euler substitution is a trick for evaluating integrals of the form where you have a rational function of x and the square root of the quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c. So there are many different versions of this substitution. One version is you set that square root of the quadratic equal to plus or minus x multiplied by the square root of a plus t you end up with a function that'll simplify. We're going to use this first substitution. But there are other substitutions that could be useful in different problems. So another one is x times t plus or minus the square root of c. A third version is to take x minus alpha, the quantity multiplied by t, and alpha is one of the real roots of this quadratic equation. So in this particular integral, take the square root of x squared minus 3x plus 2, and set it equal to x times the square root of a plus t. a is the coefficient on x squared, so it's equal to 1. So this is equal to x plus t. So how does this help us? So the first thing to do is to solve this equation for x. So square both sides of the equation. The x squared terms will cancel out. Then bring the negative 3x term to the right-hand side and the t squared term to the left-hand side. So we have 2 minus t squared is equal to 2xt plus 3x. Factor the x on the right-hand side and divide through by 2t plus 3. So we solve for x in terms of t. So x is equal to 2 minus t squared all over 2t plus 3. Now with this substitution, we also want to convert dx into dt. So we can do that by the quotient rule. It's going to be a little bit tedious, but it's not too difficult. We also have an integral where x goes from 0 to 1, so we need to change the limits of integration. So we evaluate this, and we get that t goes from the square root of 2 to negative 1. So now comes the hard part. Everywhere that you see x, you're going to want to substitute this fraction. So you're going to have to make a lot of substitutions. Furthermore, this dx has to be substituted in. So this is going to be a massive algebraic exercise. But you end up with the following complicated fraction. So this is going to help us, even though it looks like the problem is still very difficult. So now what do we do? Well, we can take 2t plus 3 in the denominator and set that equal to u. This will simplify things a little more. So we can solve this for t. We can also say du is equal to 2 dt. We change the limits of integration, so u goes from 2 root 2 plus 3 to 1. So doing this substitution, where each time we see t, we solve for t in terms of u and substitute in, we're going to end up with something that looks like this. So this is going to be something that we can calculate the integral of very easily. So we want this integral with the limits of integration going from 2 root 2 plus 3 to 1. So now we have a completely manageable integral. Any student from calculus should be able to solve this integral. So go ahead and take the antiderivative term by term and then evaluate this integral from the limits. So just substitute in and simplify and you end up 
with 135 over 16 multiplied by the natural log of 2 root 2 plus 3 minus 101 divided by 4 root 2. And this is approximately equal to negative 2.981. Presumably, the pin is the first four digits of the answer. So you could say the pin code is 2981. So that is the long way to solve the problem by hand. But I want to illustrate how you can actually hack the answer numerically in Excel. So let's say we want to calculate the area under the red curve going from 0 to 1. One way we can approximate the answer numerically is by using the midpoint rule. We will partition the x into different rectangles by specific width and we want the height of each rectangle to be the midpoint of the endpoints of each rectangle. If we increase the number of rectangles, we will get a better and better approximation of the area under the curve. So how do we do this in Excel? So I've created a blank workbook in Excel and I've copied over the integral so that we have it for reference. How are we going to numerically evaluate this integral in Excel? It seems impossible, but let's go ahead and do it. We'll make one column equal to the x values. Another column will be the function values at these x values. Then we want a column of the midpoints of these x values. Then we want the function evaluated at these midpoints. And finally, we'll calculate the area of each of these rectangles. So we start out where x is equal to 0. Then we want some number of rectangles. So let's say we just start out with 100. So we'll take the previous value plus 1 divided by 100, which is 0 0.01. Now we want the function at each of these points. So we need a fraction, or we have 3 times x cubed. So here we have x cubed minus, we take x squared, plus 2 times x minus 4. And we need this divided by the square root of x squared minus 3 times x plus 2. So here we go. That's the function evaluated at 0. Now the midpoints will be the average of these two x values. And the function at the midpoint will just be the same function evaluated at this midpoint. So the formula can just copy over. The area will be the width of this rectangle That'll be the difference in these x values. And we want it multiplied by the function at the midpoint. So now we can just copy this formula down. And we're going to need to go all the way until x is equal to 1. So let's copy this down to about 100 rows. Oh, and now we've learned something interesting. This is actually an improper integral. When x is equal to 1, the function will be undefined. No matter, we'll just delete these values. So now we want the area, which will exactly be the sum of the areas of all of these rectangles. So we just go ahead and sum up the areas. And we get negative 2981 so we get pretty much the same answer we got analytically, but we found it numerically and we found it pretty easily in Excel. Okay, technically this numerical answer will round to minus 2.982, but still we got an answer accurate to two decimal places. And if you wanted a more accurate answer, you could increase the number of rectangles pretty easily and use this method. So it's quite amazing that we can numerically estimate integrals even in Excel. One wonders if our ancient mathematic forefathers would have even gone through all the trouble of calculating things by hand if they had such numerical tools. But these are questions above my pay grade. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.